mwanzo ulikuwa na watu wangapi Okay, I have a question for you. Okay. When you to make a yapa, you know, staffs, So we just want to know how staffs do you normally pay them? I'm over to an abundant. Yeah. Actually, I have a mother and a father. Our, our driver is a father of children, and our one of the staff is a mother. So they really need our support too. As they help us to take care of the children, we have to pay them some salary so that they can be able to cater for their needs. Mm -hmm. We also have that lady, a young lady. She is here and she has family, she has brothers and sisters. So and they are she's like the breadwinner of her family. So we really pay them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it, it can be hard. Are we done God? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, to say me maybe we and then kakuta a HIV and wingina wana. How do you do so that we ensure we have taught what they infect So uh, for example, like now we have one girl and I know you saw her, you interacted, but you never even suspected. So what we normally do, if we, we get such a child, when they are young, we separate them, but with a lot of wisdom. We just not tell them you will be sleeping here, you will be sleeping there. We try to separate them when they are sleeping because you know children might even uh, the way they sleep. So sometimes it's hard because they are always playing together. Yeah. But what we normally do is we take them to the hospital for checkup. Every child that comes, we take them to go for checkup. And uh, after we know the status, we start talking to them. We let them know who they are and accept their status so that they can continue with the, with the medication. Yeah. Okay, another one. Mm. Ne Criteria again, we are not familiar as in upata staffs. Maybe someone is willing to come and volunteer in this place. Which criteria do you use? Okay, sometimes getting staffs is very hard because in our case, I like having staffs around all the time, like 24/7. Mm -hmm. Because. Because children are tricky, you can't just leave them. It's not like a school, they come in the morning, then in the evening they go home. So this is just a home, just like a home, where they go to school and then come back here as their home. So we need staff who can be able to, to be with them all the time. So the staff that I normally get, they are the staff that want to be the scholars. And I don't, I, I don't want uh, this scholar staff because it's a bit challenging. So I like staff who will be staying with the children here. I myself, I stay with them here. But every week we have uh, an off day. Every uh, in a week we have an off day for each staff, so that we make sure there is staff all always. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Okay, like kama leo so na Sunday wao mna waruhusu wanaenda kuoshi pinja mawoto wana washi pia hapa the common yeah we, we go to church we go to church our church is called Calvary Springs of Bethel mm -hmm. and uh, our pastor called uh, Pastor James Kuria mm -hmm. and uh, we have another branch here in Sherbich mm -hmm. and uh, the pastor called Pastor Onyango so that's where they go to church. Yeah. So we have always we we like them going out because they will see other people. They can interact with other children. So when they go outside in uh, in schools, they have new friends. When they go to church, they have new friends. It's not only being here at home always. It might not make sense to them to be here at church, school, everything. Being at the compound. Yeah. Okay.
Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As I promised, I'm going to put a video of uh, the orphanage exhibited and what happened, the games we played. But I'm so sorry to tell you that we are not allowed to put any video of the children. So with us here, we have the manager of the orphanage. So we are going to ask her some questions and she, she is going to politely explain everything to us, the answer questions we have, and I hope you will enjoy. My name is Immaculate Maneke. I'm Japerson Mushin Baptist Youth. And here we have Salome Mutoni Mwaora. I'm the, I'm the manager House of Hope Children's Home. Yeah, so Salome, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, we have some few questions for you. So when was this institution started? Uh, we started at the year 2007. Yeah where we started, uh, we were in Shanzu at that time and uh, it was a rental house so later we relocated from Shanzu to Shomoroni then from Shomoroni to Nyari because it was a rental house and we had a lot of challenges at that time because the home was still very new we, we never had children, enough children to get up for then we relocated to Nyari again. After staying in Nyari for, for 10 years, that's when we found that uh, we are spending a lot, especially after COVID. Challenges were more because a lot of our, most of our donors stopped supporting us and uh, others actually died in the COVID. So we were left with the very few supporters who were supporting us. And uh, after that, we decided to look for a cheaper place. That's why we came to the corner. And here we are. And we, are, we love this place because it's a bit cheap and we can afford even to buy food from this side. So, Ukiwashanzu, how many children are you having then? Yeah. In fact, from, uh, from when we started in Shanzu, we had two children mm -hmm. and later when we went to Mishomoroni that's where we got uh, 10 then from Mishomoroni to Nyali they came to a number of 20 mm -hmm. yeah. so 20 of which we could have up when you were COVID yeah. so when you back you wangapi you start to wangapi and donors wangapi yeah in fact we were like five we had five very strong donors who were supporting us, mm -hmm. but two, two of them died, mm -hmm. we were left with three, then one of them, the husband died, mm -hmm. so currently we only have two. Only two? Yeah, from UK. Two. So the students now, we have to go to school, we have to go to school, Okay, we came with the same children. We came with the same children, but when we were in, in Shanzu, they were very small. Mm -hmm. Then they grew, now they are big. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge we are having now is because they have to go to colleges, mm -hmm. universities, mm -hmm. and it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how are Toto wana soma hapa ndani, kuna shule ndani, ama wanaenda, wana rusu wako ndani, ama wana pelekwa, ndina wana rumesho? Yeah, okay. Our children, because out, we don't have a school here, but God wishes we will, we will want, want to have a school. So they go outside, but they are being taken by the van. We have a van. They are being taken to school with the van, and then the van will take them back in the evening. Oh, so Those are the ones in primary school, mm -hmm. but the ones in secondary school, they go to different secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Likewise, to those who are in college, they are in different colleges. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, from the support you get, wana pay na support as in 100% ama wakati mwina unaweza kudisappoint paka ubaki una regret kwa nini ilianzisha ama support ya niko vipi kwa watu unaweza support? Yeah, in fact, that's a very good question. Because like now, like when we were in Yali, they used to give us, on, they used to pay only for the bills, that is house rent, the electricity, and the school fees, but uh, people in Nyali used to give us food. But 
the challenge we are having now here in the corner is because we are not well established, so we don't have people giving us food. And we rely on local donors 100%. Those are the ones we rely on to give us food. Mm -hmm. yeah. So donors who are going to fail, Kabisa, who are fail. Now your time maybe how not pay some more for very down. What do you do? I thank God I have never come to that point. But sometimes it gives me a lot of stress. Like today I was uh, in the hospital and to my surprise I was told that I am having a high blood pressure. And it's because of the way things are right now. I have uh, children in, in secondary school, others joint secondary. And I have one who has just finished home for, he needs to go to college and there is no money to do that. So I think I, I, I was thinking about it very much until I found myself having that problem. Yeah. So how do you feel? Kulinda mtoto ambao maybe si wako, mwakota tupali and then you come. Ani how do you feel? Kuangalia mtoto ambao si wako, how do you feel? Okay, one thing that, for sure, one thing that inspired me to take care of these children that I, I know nothing about, because most of them are abandoned children, is the way I was brought up. I was brought up by a single mother, and we had a lot of problems. Going to school was a problem, eating was a problem, and when I, I was growing, I was admiring one day to support those children who does not have hope. And that's why, why I started uh, this home, so that at least I can be able to touch the hearts of those children. And one thing that makes me very happy is to be, see the smile on their faces, especially when uh, a child comes maybe depressed or the parents have died or the child was out there in the street with no one and after some time you see the, the child smiling, that makes me very happy and it keeps me moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe perspective ya koi mwaka unataka ufike wapi, ufike watoto wapi, wale wa college wa family visiting ndo wa kupati kwa chiti mzao? Yeah. One thing that I am really praying about is to make sure even if because after they are 18 of age according to the uh, government directives they are supposed to leave the institution so my prayer is that those who have already finished their form four i'm asking god to give me more power to continue educating them because it has been always my dream to take them to a higher level to make sure that at least they become someone in life. Like we have an example, we had a, the boy that we started with, he's now working in a bank and uh, he's married. So he makes me feel like I want to do more because at least I can create somebody out of nobody. Because he was the first child we saw in the street. In fact, we picked him from the street. And now he's doing well with his life. So how about when we leave the college and our family are talking? Who are we going to go to for Kenya, Mwende? Am I maybe you find support and empathy like take ten thousand and the one day Malika? Am I who are in a poor day? Okay, most of what we do before they 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 reach that age of fifteen, we start talking to them, like counseling them. Because out there, there is another world that they, they have no experience with. So we start talking to them, educating them. And when they are leaving, we make sure at least they have a job. Mm -hmm. Then we, if, if they are the, the orphans or abandoned, they have no one. So we make sure that we rent a house for them and uh, give them some few points so that they can start their life there. So what do you say about wale watu wenye wazazi ambao wana wana ndio umepitia ushaona like wenye mtu anapitia kama hana baba ndio umelelewa na single mother what do you tell those people wenye wamezaa alafu watoto wana wadump to evil what do you have to tell them I want to tell those people that every child is very unique 
and every child is a child of God. And dumping a child or throwing a child is a curse. You are just preparing yourself to receive a very big curse from God. Because every child comes with his or her own blessings. And I have seen it because there was a time I was, uh, some children came, two sisters came from Ukambani, they were orphans. And immediately they landed to, to our home. After two weeks, I got somebody who really loved them and she was ready to support their education. And she was ready to buy everything. She came, they came with only one coat. But she took them to a boutique, bought them very expensive things. And from that day, they started smiling. So I know every child, even especially if you, there are some single mothers who have that habit. When they give birth to children, they throw them to the dustbin, others kill them. It's not good. If you really feel that you don't want to, to take care of that child, at least you can take that child where you know he or she will be taken care of. Instead of either dumping them somewhere that at least maybe it's risky or killing them. So I urge to the youths, especially today we are having the youth, if you are not ready to have a child, please don't have that child. There are so many ways to protect yourselves and especially the Christian youths, we know, you know very well that it's not good. Even the book, the, the Bible says, you should not have sex before you get married. So don't do it because you are going to make a, a God's creation to suffer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to your donors, you are donors, you are going to say, you are support since day one, you are going to say, you are going to say, Yeah, to all those donors, I will tell them that I really appreciate and um, I pray for them every day for God to give them to give them more ears so that they can see the labor, the hard labor that, that they have been doing supporting these children. Mm -hmm. So that at least they can see the good work that they have done. Mm -hmm. Yes. So guys, that was the short story we had from Madam Wa House of Hope Children's Orphanage. Please, if you have to touch a heart, do it kindly because some of us are going through a lot out here. As you have heard from the story of the manager, she needs support from you guys, from donors. Please, kind, kindly, if you can help, please support this woman. Please show some love to those who are out there. Don't dump any child. Don't go do things that you don't want to suffer later. Maybe you pat him toto na ukutaka kupata him toto. So for those who are new on my channel, please subscribe, please like and comment below, and may God bless you.